Okay, so All right, Libby, you give it to us. Yeah. I, thank you. I wasn't able to get the mirror thing going on, so I'm going to have to work like this, but it should work fine. Um, so what we're going to do is introduce some memory leaks on purpose. So th that's going to be uh, something you don't usually do. And uh, we are oh, going to... Oh, yeah, bigger font. Mm. Uh, so the people in the back, could you give me some feedback if you if you can view it? Uh, uh, so bigger, okay. Like this? Yeah. Uh, I need to get rid of that crap. <laughs> oh, too big. <laughs> It's useful for me, but not useful for, for this format. <coughs> this is the last one. Uh, I think it's, it should be fine. Um, so I'm going to start by uh, introducing some shared memory leaks that we will uh, troubleshoot. So I'm just going to go into the create dialog and uh, um, Let's let's do a shared memory leak of uh, I did the math and 10k should be enough for it to fully leak within the next two minutes. Um, compile everything and um, start up the server and throw something like 50. And do something like 50 calls per second and hmm. maybe, I maybe I should um, write this instead Decent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to close this one. Let's start it again. Start it again. Oh. Oh, there's no history. Oh. Oh. These are just some weird scripts I have, so I can supposedly go faster, but... And uh, we're go going to be using the, um, the OpenCIP CLI on the left side to uh, look at the memory usage. And we're going to diagnose, notice the autocomplete, um, memory, oh, okay. Fair enough. So, I guess we're only seeing the the bottom side. We're missing the th this font stuff is killing me. Oh, maybe if I stop it, do we get a glimpse? Yes, we do. Okay, so <coughs> it's going to be good enough. Uh, so it's currently you can see it's at forty-seven percent. Uh, and it's uh, quickly filling up, and uh, within the next minute, it will probably go out of memory. So maybe we can stop the the traffic and uh, let's look at it uh, in this state. So, so let's start the the operation. Uh, basically, what we will do is we just have to to do this uh, the. So we're going to use the CLI, and this time in uh, quick command mode, so dash x is execute, and uh, we're going to use the MI module, and we're going to pick the mem shm dump command. What this does is 
uh, give us a full log of all the currently uh, allocated lines and uh, so or all specific allocations of shared memory of all the code in OpenSIPS. Uh, and maybe it would have been uh, also useful to mention. Um, let's look at the OpenSIPS command line. That's that should be helpful. Uh, if you notice, I'm using the uh, dash a q malloc allocator. This is so. What what that does is is switching all the allocations, as I told you earlier on the presentation, to uh, to this mode where it's, it records all of them. So that's going to be using a little bit more CPU and uh, memory, but who cares as long as we get the, the feedback out of it. So uh, again, we did the uh, MemSHM dump, and let's take a look at the logs. I'm going to full screen. Um, and the tricky thing is that you, you don't have to get lost in the output towards the bottom. That's uh, only listing the free memory, and that is totally unreadable. Uh, but rather scroll a bit to the top, and that's where we will reach the, the useful information and uh, uh, should be right around here. Okay, so now we're going to be getting some highly readable and intuitive info. For example, let's take a look at some, uh, some samples. There's, there have been 57 allocations from this register stat function that take up 616 bytes or uh, stuff from dialog from the network layer and all shared memory allocations are listed and nicely summarized in this output you even uh, can tell exactly how much memory they each use and at some point we are going to be able to spot some weird stuff going on in blg create dialog yes, it oh it was you, you saw it nice I did, oh th th that's it that's it so as you can see, it's already <coughs> eating up 53 megabytes. Uh, we started OpenSIPS with uh, 100 and uh, yeah, one, uh, 128, I think, and uh, that that's pretty much it. You you can just go straight to the developers and say, hey, guys, that you leak there, so <laughs> do fix it. <laughs> It's 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 right there. Uh, it, as you can see, it's it's even telling us the line, like DLG create dialog line one two nine four, right? If if we go there, it's let's see. Oh, all right, it's so, so it's one two nine four, right? It's it's yes, it's, it's like so. It's a great example of how fun it can be to to de debug C applications. I mean, I guess if you use stuff like Valgrind, you kind of get. Uh, similar <coughs> similar feedback and experience so that's as far as the shared memory leaks go and uh, the more rare ones are private memory leaks um, usually we use private memory for uh, stuff that uh, doesn't need to be shared with processes and uh, obviously that's private it would we would ideally use it all over the place but uh, most often you can't so whenever there might be some leaks there, whenever maybe we do some I don't know changes in MI code or uh, really uh, stuff like that that's very specific uh, to, to tooling. So how to do uh, how to handle those? Uh, if I just for the dump command, so instead of doing the memshm dump, the Counterpart to that is mem pkg dump, but uh, now it requires an additional parameter, which is the uh, the PID of uh, of the process the process that you're targeting, uh, you're telling to dump its private memory pool statistics, and you can find out those using, I guess you can do a lot of stuff. Yes, but y you could uh, even do it through the mi with using the mi ps command, and. Uh, yeah, just find out the PID that you're trying to, to troubleshoot. It, it's more useful like this because it gives you the type, right? Whereas if you do like like a uh, PS grep open sips, you do get the PIDs, but you have no idea which is which. Like, okay, uh, I'm trying to troubleshoot a 
uh, timer process or I, I, I don't know what could leak, maybe a UDP process or an, or an MI one. So uh, <coughs> we get it using the MIPS and uh, let's pick one and say 15, 4, 5, 9. And uh, we tell it to dump, look at the logs, and this one should be smaller. There's not that much private memory usage. And as you can see, it's a very low footprint. It hasn't done a lot of stuff because there's not that much state to keep. Again, it's more of a startup thing. Right, so that's how we, we, would, we would troubleshoot private leaks. I guess it's, it doesn't, uh, it's not that useful to make a leak <laughs> and hunt for it. Yeah, so if you have any questions, uh, was that was, was clear? Was that clear? It's so first of all, before taking questions, uh, basically what uh, Liz is trying here to do is to tell you guys, stop reporting I have a memory. Now you <laughs> know how to do it by yourself. <laughs> you should no. directly point in your bug report, hey, there's a memory at this line. <laughs> so, yeah, so we are, we are trying to outsource some of our work to you guys, right? Update, update uh, we, we do have a guide uh, on that. But we can yeah, but not covering exactly this part. It's just how to generate the dump and then send it oh, to, you're right. to, you know, to escalate the problem. Okay, so that, the question now. Okay. All right. So if I've got a server in production and <coughs> I notice that I've got, got some sort of memory leak, are we going to be able to change the, um, the memory library in the default style, or would you recommend we stop the service and we run it in foreground mode with the options added on? What's the best way to change, change the memory? Uh, I'm, I mean, I, I don't use the foreground mode a lot, honestly. Just Bogdan uses it, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of his baby. Uh, it, he, it, it's may, maybe how they used to do things, you know, but back in the, the, the 30s, so... <laughs> so... so uh, so uh, but anyway, j joke aside, uh, joke aside, you, you don't have to. So the, the foreground mode is a highly uh, development-oriented uh, use-it mode, and you don't have to go that far. Uh, it's enough to just change the dash a allocator and just start it like that in the background. Where, and where do I change that? Do I do? Are we, are we oh, have an option in the default? File uh, I, I was going to add the yes. I, I will add an option to the default file. Okay, so uh, right. Nick, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if you noticed, he removed the M4 support today, and we are going to uh, extend it with some uh, some easy way to change the allocator without having to edit the init d file. <laughs> yeah, I can run. I can do something extra than Alex. <laughs> I don't really have a question, but comment from a company who has deeper uh, memory leaks in, for example, the presence one. Is, this is really awesome, so I want to thank you guys for making it. Really amazing. <laughs> Any other questions for Livio before we go to leave you us? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. Really? You want to ask a question for him? Would you wait all the way to the office? I was just doing test if you are making uh, memory leaks on purpose. Uh, Ever. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I haven't. That's a, that's a classified secret. <laughs> I don't aim for that, but I also. Uh, but I'm very successful yeah. in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, thank you, Livio. Let's have some applause for him. Thank you.